The gauges on this particular violin are the G string 2.5, 1.36, 92 can be 1, and this E string, in this case, this one is 74, it can be up to 82. Is this actually about the thicknesses or the lengths of the strings? Who gives a crap? It's really unimportant. Here's what happens, and that is the most important thing. When you string your violins correctly, when you string your violins with thicker strings, when you use that type of bridges on your violins, something magical happens. People start talking about this. So this is not a stringing advice. This is a piece of conversation. In this video, you're going to learn about correct historical stringing, and we're going to speak about how to string your baroque violin for a very low pitch of 383, 392 hertz, and also how to string your violin for a very high pitch of 465 or even higher. So what is the problem when you play, let's say, French baroque music or Napolitan baroque music? But the problem is when you string your violin at 383 or 392 hertz and you are using the same strings, you are going to end up absolutely inevitably guaranteed with two problems. Problem number one, your strings will have not enough tension. That leads to another problem. That leads to having a difficulty of intonation. The louder you play, the higher your instrument sounds. And what can be even more frustrating than playing out of tune and feeling terrible among your colleagues without, without even knowing how to solve the issue, because the issue needs to be solved by choosing considerably thicker strings and increasing the tension on your instrument but how you do this without damaging your instrument and this is what this video is all about and when you fix this you will sound great you will sound rich you will sound round you'll have all this articulation and projection and vividness in your tone you will feel better on stage as a musician the musical result overall will be much more enjoyable also for your audiences and that's what it is all about now what happens when you play at a very much higher pitch? So the common advice is that the higher you go, the thinner your strings must be. So when they switch from, let's say, 410 or 415 hertz, and they play at 440 or 465, they typically go to thinner strings. Now, to begin with, a lot of players today use strings that are too thin anyway. So when you go even thinner, the result is your instrument sounds as Ricking knife on a plate. The sound is very thin and not expressive, not warm. And on top of this, the strings will break very frequently because they're simply not strong enough. So what is the solution? Uh, contrary to the common sense and contrary to a very popular advice, the solution is exactly 180 degrees opposite going for thicker strings. Now, the question is how you do not break your instrument. And this is a great question because the truth is, if your bridge is exactly the same, high bridge with very high strings over the fingerboard, so what happens is this, the higher the bridge, the thicker the strings, the higher the pitch, the more pressure there is on the top of your violin. This pressure stops the vibration of your instrument and also increases the friction between the string and the bridge, which is why the strings break very frequently at the points of that friction. So how do you solve this problem? You solve this problem by going for a much lower bridge. And I'm talking about 25, absolutely maximum 27 millimeters, where the strings almost touch the fingerboard, just they don't bounce. And that advice comes from Galeazzi at the end of the 18th century. So when you do this, there are two things that are happening, actually more than two things. Uh, first of all, the vertical pressure of these uh, much thicker strings on your violin result in a pressure that is lower than on a modern violin or a typical baroque violin. So the pressure on this violin, vertical pressure, is less than on a modern violin with, let's say, heavy string, and I'm talking about domestic or any kind of modern string. So the pressure here is less or comparable. Why? Because the bridge is much 
lower. Now, why these strings sound warm and round and projecting and they will definitely last very long? Once upon a time, my wife played on this violin. On the A string, strung at 465 and the A string was 0.8 EQ, which is a Baroque violin A string. So after a few days it stretches, it becomes thinner, it becomes about 75, 76, which is what Marat Mersenne says in uh, L'Harmonie Universelle. He says that the first of the violin is the fourth of the lute, and the fourth of the lute is approximately that thickness, not thinner because again then we run into physical problems like insufficient uh, tension to produce any kind of stable tone or projecting expressive tone. So this is why this instrument works. So the gauges on this particular violin are the G-string 2.5, 1.36, 92 can be 1, and this E-string, in this case, this one is 74, it can be up to 82. And I hope that solves all your musical issues. Uh, beware! Do not simply string your violin especially if it is an antique violin with these types of strings because chances are if you are playing on an antique baroque violin that is a violin made in the 18th century chances are this violin has been rebuilt into a modern instrument that means that the plates have been thinned down and if you load your antique violin with that type of tension and pressure maybe it will not last your strings will survive but not the violin <laughs> and probably you prefer to change strings rather than to change violins. <laughs> and so if it is a modern violin, well, the chances are there is more chance that it will you know, survive this uh, kind of stringing. However, it needs to be built correctly. So not thin plates, not the modern type, by all means, the plates must be healthy must be thick enough to carry this kind of load and the most important thing is that your bridge must be approximately 25 maximum 27 millimeters high somewhere on youtube or on facebook i don't remember where there's also a video where i'm showing the algebraic formula that shows how to calculate vertical pressure when your bridge is low and this formula and this calculation shows that the vertical pressure on the plate is less this is why the instrument still can vibrate uh, freely enough but the friction points are considerably reduce so there is a less friction which is why these much stronger strings still can outlast considerably thinner strings so this is what you do when you're playing at a lower pitch you put strings considerably thicker are you with me this is crucially important that will yield a rich round warm expressive sound without having intonation problems and when you're playing at a higher pitch you do the same thing you go for thicker strings and mind the bridge must be adjusted and the overall instrument must be in a healthy condition i hope you found some value in this advice and i hope this will help you to create even better music if you are a player if you are an instrument maker interested in creating baroque violins for your customers i hope that gives you some food for thought if you have any questions i'm here to help and do subscribe to my channel and I see you in the next video. I will leave it up to YouTube to decide which video YouTube thinks is the best for you. So I will see you in that video. And one last thing, I'm Dimitri. I'm the award-winning author of the best-selling book on fine violin making from the old master's legacy to the future of the craft with a forward by New York Times best-selling author. And in the past 30 plus years, I've been specializing in crafting instruments for world-class musicians from anywhere in the world and also helping other instrument makers to achieve more success in their lives and the last thing is this actually about the thicknesses or the lengths of the strings who gives a crap it's really unimportant here's what happens and that is the most important thing when you string your violins correctly when you string your violins with thicker strings when you use that type of bridges on your violins something magical happens people start talking about this so this is not a stringing advice. This is a piece of conversation for you to connect with your colleagues and for your colleagues and you to connect with your audiences. And together, 
keep this musical thing we call culture and some of us really care about that because we see our lives better with in a cultured society where music has place so let's keep this culture alive together i hope you found some value in this idea and if you did subscribe to my channel and i see you in the next video